go. All right, fellas. Decipher again. I've had fun doing the last few. And today we're gonna have more fun, yes? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you saying yes because I'm saying yes, or you, you believe me, yes? We gotta have fun, we gotta have fun. Mm. Okay. Subject says we'll get our fun. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Um, yeah, of course. Today, I'll talk about the anointing. And I'll put it in quotes, the anointing. Yeah. Um, mainly because I've had mixed feelings about what the word means or how people have used it, probably more than what the word means. Um, and I suppose just to throw out there, I'm just going to throw out there. Where we are, we've got superstar preachers in the Western world and, and, and people making money off it and it seems to be a tagline, it seems to be thrown on a lot of flyers and and a lot of church promotions that say come and see the anointed minister, come and see the anointed songstress, come and see the anointed you know, I got to the point where I was like what do they really mean? You know when a word become even become even redundant because it's used so much. And does that have a stamp of approval to say this is the person you need to see? What is it we're looking for? So mm -hmm. um, I just want us to really talk about that, debate it. What is this word? No. What should Christians be expecting? Does it mean one man is above another man? Is one person anointed and another one isn't? You know. So that's what I want to talk about. You know, anybody watching, obviously, they're gonna have their own views. But mm -hmm. let's just put ours, ours out there and see if we can help them. What's your views about that? My my views. Um, growing up, um, anointing comes with um. If you're anointed minister of God, comes with prowess, you know what I mean? And as you grow up, you, you kind of like, in the church, I grew up in the church, and if someone says, yo, that minister's anointed, you're like, you kind of like, yo, you could call me some serious stuff today, and whatever. Mm -hmm. But um, as I get older in the faith, and you know what I mean, a few, uh, <laughs> a few more um, life years go past my life, these same so called super saints for Christ, yeah, um, these great anointed ministers, like, yeah, he's displaying some sort of thing on stage, but like, I'm looking at a not really anointed lifestyle. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I'm going, hold on a second. If you've got such a demonstration of the Holy Spirit, yeah, the anointing, yeah, but you can't apply that to your day-to-day -day life, not to be a perfect human, yeah. but when you're ravaging as worse than sinners, that sinners will come to me and say, that person is worse than an old, you know what I mean? He's worse than me, you know what I mean? And I'm not saved, yeah. It's, hmm. So what does the anointing mean? Hmm. That might be a good question. Because we've thrown the word out and someone might be actually thinking, anointing, I don't actually know what anointing is. I've heard it. Yeah. People preached it, but I don't really know what <coughs> it is. So, I don't know, maybe Travis, if you could have, what, what would you define the anointing well, to be? An anointing. <coughs> <laughs> and, and, uh, yeah. and anointing, which yeah. is clear to distinguish, yeah. um, or to anoint, mm -hmm. is is basically you know to, to rub or to to, um, to cover or whatever the case may be. Um, the anointing, as used in the biblical parlance and um, you know in church circles, yeah, I would best define it at this present moment um, as the power, um, the empowerment. The enabling power, as it were, um, that comes from the Holy Spirit um, to the believer um, to empower them to, to either achieve things or to do things which is outside the realm of natural <coughs> um, natural ability. So this could manifest itself in different ways, mm -hmm. um, which like even from your example there, where they may be an anointed preacher, but in their relationship they haven't learned how to tap into the, the power of God to make their relationships prosper. Um, or you may be, you may have a great relationship, but in your finances, you haven't learned the anointing of wisdom to know how to manage your finances. So I do believe that in every single situation of our Christian lives, there is um, the, the chance for us yeah. to have the anointing at work to, as Isaiah 10, 27 says, to remove the burden and to destroy the yoke. And that, for me, <coughs> is, is how I define anointing. It can't, it can't no longer be about physical manifestations, a frenzy, okay. such and such, such and such, which we see in church. It has to be now back in the scripture. You know, when you're talking about the burden and the yoke, because I get their terms that some people may yeah. not know. What would you be referring to when you're saying to remove, remove the burden? 
or the yolk? Well, <coughs> I would say the anointing removes any burden or yolk or any. Um, or what is the burden or the yeah, yolk, basically? Any um, anything that is not of God. Okay. Any barrier, as it were. Okay. Cool. Um, that is not of God. Any <coughs> any manipulation that is not of God. Any characteristic which is not of God. It's the power of God that which like smashes it to pieces. In the sense, like I said, it could be, you know, you've been, um, you've never learned how to manage your finances properly, whatever the case may be. And the wisdom of God is the power to shatter old mindsets, to shatter certain barriers to <coughs> to increase and whatever the case may be um, in your finances. Or it could be a ministry related. I know we've kind of narrowed down the anointing to just ministry, yeah. um, which is, is an issue. Because if it is, if your life is just only defined by ministry, then what you do on a Sunday, or, right? What you yeah. do on a Sunday, whenever Christians are around. Or... At the end of the day, people can kind of fake that to a sense. Yeah, yeah. So it must be something that you know you can actually see whether it's instant or over time. Yeah. That there has been some market change in that area of life, which has caused it to now look more according to what Christ has already um, in decided. Christ character. Okay. Cool. Something you said. Um, which I've heard some people say as well, and I kind of want to pull on that one. Um, not to really to pick out words, but to make it good to sometimes look at words, some of the words we use to describe what we're talking about. And there's one we said some people don't learn to tap into. And I think some people say as well, subconsciously, when it comes to the anointing, is it something we need to learn to tap into? Is there anything in the Christian life that we need to tap into, or is it already there? Which is, already, which is really, that's, what, that's all I wanted to really pull out. Is it something, it's a case of where we have to tap into it and then once we tap in, almost like plug in, bam, it's working. Mm. Or is it something that's there and we kind of just have to learn to exercise it or at least acknowledge that it's there? Do you see where I'm coming from? Yeah, yeah. So what you, so what you're saying is ultimately... Um, I was striving to get something we've already got. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, so what you, do you think or... You think that's a nonsense, or no? What's that me? Um, you think, <laughs> uh, it, 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 is, is this an anointing yeah, thing? Is it, it something it, we should for me, strive uh, to get? Or? I, I, as, you know what I mean? Me, I, I really think you got a problem with this word anointing. Mm -hmm. I, I'll be honest, I can't even get past this word anointing because um, a reality show is, is that anointing <laughs> is um, is a case of it, right. What we striving for? Because people strive to be anointed ministers of the gospel. You know what I'm saying? Whatever still, yeah. But really, I want to have a spirit filled, a spirit led, a purpose led life in Christ. Yeah, first and foremost. Yeah. But people strive to manifest this so called glory bound appro um, message ministry. Fires coming down. Uh, we're gonna be putting on this gig affinity, yeah, and it'd be really cool. Like, I, I, I'll be straight. I, I, I look at Acts, yeah, and I yeah. look at the audible sound of the Holy Spirit in the place, and the place yeah. shaking, fire from heaven, and all this stuff. Like, yeah, that's the manifestation of the Flames anointing. You yeah, 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 say all these things, and you hear it's all these great things, yeah. <laughs> is is that? Yeah, let's have it happen. Yeah. But um, realistically, it's a case of how do we define? anointed minister anointing is the process of slapping oil on your forehead yeah whether it's coconut oil whether it's virgin olive oil whatever yeah. oil it well, is it could be slapping it, anything it, it, any oil is what they use in old testament exactly. it could be yeah. lard whatever it is you mean <laughs> because in the end of the day you were saying well. <laughs> because the bible the biblical times of olive oil was the the local yeah, because olives, yeah, yeah, olives there, yeah. Yeah? yeah. If it was in England, it could have been lard. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? If it was in the West Indies, it would have been coconut oil. You know what I'm saying? You know, so we had to show it, it was just because of the zone. That was the oil that was yeah. that, that yeah. was local to them. Yeah. So we now in, in uh tradition, um, and we will hopefully look at that scripture that we pointed out where they say they let the elders bring the sick to the elders yeah, yeah. and anoint them. You know what I'm saying? It, it, James. Which yeah. is great and fantastic. Yeah, I'm not saying you can't people can't use oil and anoint people with oil, but it's anointed. We're looking at if you're anointed or not. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, okay, right. Are we looking at I'd rather be spirit led and use this word of anointed, this so called manifestation of everyone enjoying your ministry and going, it was such an anointed ministry because I enjoyed the manifestation of something, which realistically, somebody who's not saved can do. Yeah. But I suppose you talk about anointing in two different aspects, right? Because Go on. there's the anointing of healing, healing yeah. someone. Yeah. And then you talk about the anointing of the, the minister on yeah. the you know on the stage or whatever yeah. come to preach come to sing come mm -hmm. to dance come to do whatever they're doing mm -hmm. um and the one about the healing i, I can understand that and i hear what you're saying as well mm -hmm. that 
simply it's a place of something God can put okay. oil, can be something else. Mm -hmm. But we know the power to heal the sick has got to be the spirit. Yeah. The bottom line, yeah. oil don't yeah. heal anybody. <laughs> it's got yeah. to be yeah. the spirit of God. Um, but I want to really make the distinction clear because I think where we hang up and my hang up is why well, the way we throw that word out when it comes to the, the preacher or the superstar yeah. person yeah. who's um, be marketed that way and mm -hmm. if it's damaging mm -hmm. the faith mm -hmm. and the body or if it's helping I mean, what do you think in terms of local churches or what you see on the God channels or TV I and all? Both. I think if it's done in the wrong way it is damaging like everything like most things in the Bible how many wars have been fought with the Bible, slavery was justified with the Bible, you know. Mm. When things are taken, the, the book was never meant to be interpreted outside of love or outside of relationship with mm. God. When it's under that context, I believe it's great because I know when I've come to have a watch, um, someone who is, I've been told is, is you know, um, anointed, it inspires me, you know, and it does um, inspire me to draw deeper in my relationship so as to, you know, ultimately get to a point where I have the results that they have. You know, or yeah. you know, the manifestation of, of the spirit of God in, in the ministry as they do. Um, but at the same time, I do think it can be used um, in a way almost to intimidate people and make people feel like they can't be anointed, which is completely unscriptural. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Now yeah. I was going to say something about just how it was used in the Old Testament. We, we can jump onto that next time. It will lead neatly actually into what. Another question I want to ask, so yeah, cool, cool, cool. cool.